In this G7 Long Range Ballistic Calculator instructional segment, we're going to cover the outputs, including units, tabs, and drop charts. Now that we've got our validated inputs, we want to calculate our drop chart. So we'll just go up here and calculate by pressing on the drop chart tab, or we've got a couple calculate buttons at the top right or bottom right sections. So we just calculated a drop chart, and let's look at the range increment. Essentially, we've got data for every 100 yards, and we can scroll down to view all the way out to 2,000. If we want to change that to 25-yard increments, uh, we can pick it from the chart. We've got 25-yard increments, and we only want to look at data out to 1,000 yards. calculate. Now we'll see that we've got 25 yard increment data all the way through a thousand yards. Okay, so in our trajectory validation section we talked about shooting 965 yards and it took us about 81 clicks. So you can see that with these uh, altitude and temperature parameters we're right in that ballpark. So one thing that's really important is that you do that trajectory validation step so that you can be confident that these click outputs or these MOA outputs will exactly match what you've experienced in the field. So we've, we've adjusted our range increment and our maximum range. We can also adjust the units for our output columns. Uh, most of the time it's convenient to have our drop output in clicks so that we can dial our clicks right into our scope. But sometimes we may want to use the MOA outputs. For instance, we've got a rifle scope reticle that's calibrated in minutes of angle, or, um, or just for comparison purpo purposes, sometimes minutes of angle is pretty convenient. Uh, look at the difference in minutes of angle versus uh, our calculated drops. We're exactly one quarter of our drop in clicks. Usually I like to have my drop output in clicks and my wind output in minutes of angle because I like to dial my drop and hold for my wind. Now everybody's going to have their own, uh, their own idea about how to do this. Uh, I like to see my spin drift in inches. So we can take a look at this uh, spin drift in inches, take a look at how big that is at a thousand yards. Looks like spin drifts around six inches at a thousand yards. That's that's significant enough that we need to start compensating for it. Back at 800, it's only about four inches. That's half a minute. That's pretty reasonable. So we've just adjusted our our units. Uh, one thing that you should notice is that when you select click value, it references the click value that you input on your input screen, input page. Now, one thing that you'll notice here is that we have a previous tab. If we want to do some comparisons between different inputs, we can go back to our input chart and look at the difference between 2978 and the previous calculation of 3025. Uh, let's look at 1,000 yards in clicks. Uh, 3025 is 83.3 clicks, and we can look at 1,000 yards with 2978, 86.9. So we're talking about uh, almost four clicks, which is a minute of angle. So that's a pretty good change in, in velocity, 50 feet per second, and it costs us almost a minute of angle of impact change at 1,000 yards. That kind of shows you why a low extreme spread on your velocity for a long range cartridge is so important. You know, another thing that we can compare is a totally different cartridge. Uh, we could put the inputs in for a uh, 300 Ultra Mag, perhaps, and compare uh, how that affects the um, uh, drop and wind deflection calculations. Okay, we're going to pull up a factory load here. We're going to look at a Remington Scirocco. We're going to do the 300 Ultra Mag. Uh, 
Then we're going to look at the 180 grain Scirocco bonded. Now that says we're running a 0.5 BC at 3250. Now that, that looks reasonable. I agree with those numbers. So I'm going to add that to my program. And we can go ahead and save that load. Three hundred Remington Ultra Mag. And then we can use one of our other calculate buttons to calculate that. Now that calculate will calculate that drop chart. And you'll see that it shifts all the previous calculations into tabs. So now we have our 300 Remington Ultramag with the 0.5 BC 3250 muzzle velocity. And we can compare against our 617-2978 and our 617-3025. So at 3025, our drop in clicks at a thousand yards is 83.3 clicks and our wind deflection is 4.7 minutes of angle for a 10 mile an hour wind so let's compare that to this 300 ultra mag at a thousand yards our clicks are 79.7 so we're talking about three clicks it's about seven inches now here's an interesting number the wind deflection is actually more by over half a minute so while the drop is a little better, the wind deflection is more. Now, one of the keys to long range is compensating for wind deflection, so I feel that the, the better wind deflection numbers are a little better. So that, that kind of helps us on the comparison of our different cartridges, shows us the trajectory validation. Now what we want to do is take a look at printing drop charts and printing range cards. Now the drop chart's pretty easy. That's going to just basically print on a full sheet of paper the information that we just calculated. And I've got a drop chart sitting right here from a range session that shows us you know, that data. Basically, I've got 100-yard increments. I've got my drop in minutes of angle and my wind in minutes of angle. But uh, I've also recorded the information that I measured at the range for my far target range, my click adjustments, my altitude and temperature. So this is a pretty handy uh, piece of paper to have with us when we go to the range uh, just to record our information to adjust our clicks off of. But once we've validated our trajectory and we're confident in our data, we can print a range card that we can laminate maybe and take with us, uh, put in our shooting bag. Uh, we've got two different types here. We've got a simple one uh, and we've got a complete. And if you explore that, essentially what it does is, is uh, gives us a really small compact card when we've got some different size adjustments. The range is 1,000. We can do our output in clicks or in minutes of angle, or inches, mils as well. Uh, we can do small size, or uh, we also have a large size uh, for, for older eyes, perhaps, uh, or if space isn't a consideration. Some guys like to tape these drop charts to their stocks. Uh, altitude, 5,000 feet. Uh, temperature, 59 degrees. Now, this is for the simple. This is our standard. Uh, altitude and temperature. I like to set stuff up for 7,030 degrees for our, most of our western hunting situations. So I'm going to build this small chart for 7,030 degrees. And we're not going to shoot past 1,000 yards at a game animal, so we're going to keep that right at 1,000. So let's preview what that looks like. Really simple, really small. Uh, gives us our basically our drop and wind chart for uh, uh, zero to a thousand yards for seven thousand and thirty degrees. I'll go ahead and print one of those so we can look at it on paper. And then I'll go ahead and show you what this complete drop chart looks like. And what we've done with the complete is we've given you a range of altitude and temperature values and a range of inclination angles. And that will allow us to build a drop chart that's complete that we can take in the field for use in any situation that we see. So we're going to do a thousand yards on this one as well. Let's do the output in clicks, quarter minute. So let's take a preview look at that. So we're going to see several different sections for our different uh, air density. We've got 
uh, different elevation and temperature combinations. And then inside of these, we also have different incline angles that we have to shoot at as well. So that gives you the solution for wind and for your different drop situation. So I'm going to print this one out. And you could just fold this one in half and slide it under your ammo bandolier or, or inside your backpack, and it's pretty handy to have out there in the field. So there's some in the field uh, options that you can use. We've also showed you the one that you can take to the range uh, just for making notes and validating your trajectory. Now that we've covered the output section, including units, tabs, drop charts, and print functionality, we've explored all the features and functions of the free online long range ballistic calculator. If you haven't seen them already, please view the previous instructional videos for the long range ballistic calculator at g7.com.